Good. All right, we're at Western Iowa Tech here today in our motorcycle and power sports division, continuing on with our air-cooled V-twin engine assembly. Some of the things we're going to focus on before we actually uh, continue on with our gear case assembly is we want to make a point of some different points that you guys have uh, learned about in class, and that's on adjustable push rods here. We've taken the time here to take a set of stock push rods, which are color-coded for an evolution motor here, and they have a particular place that they need to go in the engine. We've got a chart out of the diagram that tells us whether this is like a, is the, the green one, guys, wasn't that a rear exhaust? Yeah. Or was it front exhaust? Uh, front exhaust. I think it was. But we're going to follow that chart. So if you can see here, you can see the band that's on here. And then also what we're showing is we took a set of adjustables out of an engine and we found that they all matched up as far as what that ultimate length ended up being. And it even matched the color code. So last person that put these adjustables in an engine did a pretty good job about that. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to start to install our pinion gear. Uh, which drives the oil pump and drives the camshaft, which ultimately drives the valves. So the biggest thing that I want to make a point on here is that if you do not take contact cleaner and clean those threads and take contact cleaner and clean the nut and appropriate apply Loctite where they want and how they want it, this thing's going to come off. If this comes off, you're going to have a you're going to have a big mess in here. We also have a keyway, which we always recommend replacement. Uh, there's no sense over a few cents to to not do that. We have our timed breather gear, and we're going to assemble this appropriately. But before we do that, we're going to miss out on an opportunity. It's something I want to show you guys on on YouTube. Will you guys get your special washer out of your cam? That's something I forgot to grab here. While they're locating this piece here, we want to talk about these lift, these tappet blocks here. They're labeled front and rear. We also have some holes here that line up with the engine case. And what you're going to see here in a few minutes is you're going to see that they have special tools that are tapered. That what's going to happen is we're going to install two of these. And we're basically going to line this up and give it the best... Uh, the best alignment with that hole in the case. If you simply just took these, these are not dowel pinned, okay? So we're trying to align that up and we're also going through a gasket and we don't want to obstruct that oil hole that's going to feed the tappets. So we've already done that last week. We talked about the, uh, the oil pump feeds the tappets first, then it feeds the crankshaft. Oil's gonna come through this hole, up into this lifter block, through holes here in the bore. I'm gonna, yeah, that's good. We got these holes in there, and then it's going to go around. And you'll notice here, if you look at their baggies here, look at the bench overall, is you'll see how everything's laid out, everything's cleaned, everything's good to go. And the, the bags themselves are labeled front intake so that we don't mix these up. There's wear patterns on there, we want to put it back in the right location. But you can see this hole here. Oil is going to go through the lifter block, fill that hole, fill the lifter, and it's going to function properly from there. So this is all pretty important that we use a lot of assembly lube as we put this together. The big reason, the big advantage I want to show you guys for review for your uh, assembly here and then on YouTube is that stock Harley Davidsons have this special washer that goes on the back of the camshaft. Now I'm going to screw these guys up here. They've done such a good job here. Oh, apparently forgot to turn that off. <clears throat> this factory washer goes back here in the case. Can you get a good shot of that? That's good. You can back up there a little bit. Why don't we grab a flashlight here and see if this helps. Danny, you want to hold that? Okay. And what you're going to notice about this washer is how it's cut off here. What that's cut off for is clearance for the lifter. So if you took and just put a bunch of washers on here, as this moves up and down here, that would actually smoke that and you're going to have a problem. That's why you notice when you go to the shim kits to basically set the end play for that camshaft, if you kept continuing on, getting here, if you continued on with these big washers, you'd eventually come into where you'd make contact on that. So Harley-Davidson's stock one is actually cut off. Now the thing is, this can be put in wrong. So if you take a look here, you could accidentally put that backwards and that's probably going to have a good chance it's going to hit the camshaft, or excuse me, the lifter. The other thing is, if you put these in the wrong order, so if I took and did something like, like this one is set up in this fashion, and we don't even have a cutout on the aftermarket setup that we have here, but we have clearance, which we're going to verify here in a few minutes. But if we took and used this one and put it in backwards 
and put the other shim in front of it, do you see where the big problem would come? Okay, so well, I can't stress that enough. I'm going to give you that back for your guys' engine. I'm going to assemble this uh, back on here like so. And then uh, what we're going to do is take the next step. We're going to go ahead and put our pinion nut and stuff on here. We've already cleaned this with contact cleaner. It's dried and ready to go. We have the torque spec looked up. So I'm going to have Charles here. This is his engine. He's going to come in here. We're going to get our keyway slid in place. We're going to slide our, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to slide our pinion uh, gear on first that drives with the worm gear. Then we're going to get our final one on, then our nut, and we're going to torque this in place. So we'll pause the video while we go ahead and tighten that up. Okay guys, we're going to continue on here, and one of the things I want to point out is Charles is sliding this on, grab your other gear. You see, he, he slid this in place and the keyway sticking out, notice the notch. I've seen people where they miss that, they don't know what's there, there's enough threads on there to go ahead and start tightening in there. You think you're going to have a bad day? Yeah. Absolutely. So you want to make sure, you guys are trained, you know this, look at what we gained there. Make sense? Remember in the Harley video too, they talked about different years, whether this was chamfered or, or they had a, you know, model changes over time. On this one here, we can't screw this up because it's one piece. The old ones, you had a bushing and then a separate gear, and it was really important how you put that on. But ultimately, follow your service manual. Now, we didn't get any assembly lube on the threads, correct? Well, it looks like there's a little bit on there. Okay. Well, let's not chance it. Let's grab our contact cleaner. Okay, grab your air gun right there. Now this is how we'd go through and make sure and do it correctly instead of just assuming that the contact cleaner is going to dry. Perfect. All right, let's apply a few drops of Loctite on your nut. And what we're going to do, we're going to torque this down and we're going to do it multiple steps like we've done in every other video. So our first wrench is set up at about half the torque. The final value was 45, right guys? Yep. We said so. Grab your, uh, give him, make sure you give him the right torque wrench, the one that's set smaller here. Okay. Now, per the service manual, you wouldn't even have the top end or anything on. And what they do is they have you hold, put the piston pin in the connecting rod and put it down on like a U-shaped tool. And then you'd be able to turn it in, turn over one-handed. So Lionel's going to grab the uh, crankshaft holding wrench and use the other side. And we're going to go ahead and torque this down. Now, we're not using an impact. That wrench is not meant to have, uh, it's just a, a self-ratcheting wrench. Yeah, that would happen. Go ahead and pause it. Let's just take your tool back off. Okay. Start recording again. Yep. Go ahead. Do you not wait for my director's cut? No. Paxton, aren't you the director? Okay. No, that's Omar. All right, what did we get? Oh, uh, well, yeah, Omar wants to be the director here. That's fine. Nope, we got a different wrench already set up for you. So you just torqued it at what? 25. 25. These brand new tools that uh, don't like to come apart too easy. All right. Ready, Lionel? Yep. Now, I like how he asked him if he was ready, so they're working together on this. Okay. So we're at 45. We're good and done. Now we're going to continue on. Let's go ahead and move into our camshaft here. So we're going to get some assembly lube on this. We'll keep videotaping here. We're just putting this back in. We already measured the end play before, and we know we're good and happy. Does anybody remember what that maximum end play amount was? Uh, four and a half thou. No, that's the run out for up run and down. Out. I'm talking an end play back and forth. It's, it's a big number. 15 to 30. That's side clearance. Camshaft end play was like 50 thousandths. Mm -hmm. It was quite a bit of room they'd let you move around in there. I'm going to go ahead and kind of get this gasket out of the way here. And we're, we're I mean, really liberal here. We, we're just putting uh, assembly lube all over the place. Once we're in place, we can pour some assembly lube down from the top. So he's in place. Now we have to start talking, thinking about timing it. So I'll get a flashlight in here and see if you guys can see this in the video. What we need to do is we have a mark right here, and this is this is difficult to see here. Let me get a pin. You got a little notch in the camshaft, and we have a notch on the crankshaft there that is very difficult to see right there. Do you see that? Yep. Okay, so let's go ahead and rotate those around. Now, Lionel, you might need to uh, rotate the engine for him. 
Oh. You can go all the way around there if you're yeah. going to go that way. Keep going just all the way. Okay, slow down. Okay, uh, a little more. Right there, stop. Now we're going to make the attempt to go back in. Mind your way or helping? No, you're all right. Okay, Lionel, rotate it forward just a hair. Okay, right there. We're pretty good up and down here. Now we're ready for the breather. So go ahead and loop that up good. Just pour that in here. And what we've done is we've purposely taken that spacer washer off that we've talked about. I, I think we talked about this in another video. These guys here in class have definitely talked about this. A lot of times when guys pull the cam cover off, this drops down into the oil, um, the oil catch can, and it's forgot about it. You don't know it exists. So what he's got here now is another mark he's going to line up. Let's find it on the breather. Very, very hard to see with that oil on there. Okay, go ahead. Let's turn this towards the camera here. Can you see that now? Okay. Now even as I'm looking at this flashlight, I keep double checking myself. If I move my light away and start to start to see that I'm definitely lined up there and I'm lined up here, so we're good to go and everything's timed correctly. I cannot stress enough right now. Get a little bit of grease, get it on this fiber washer, and get this in place. Before you put that cover on, that's going to be important that we get this uh, appropriately assembled here. No, that one's not directional. It's just a certain thickness. Okay. All right. Uh, that is how you would time the camshaft uh, to the crankshaft and to the breather gear. You want to watch our next video. We're going to teach you guys how to install the tappet blocks and move on up with the push rods. Okay. I'm going to grab this and just get in here. Guys, one of our students here made a notice that he could see from behind that as the, as the engine was being turned over, the oil pump is not spinning. And this is why you're always checking stuff. And a lot of times you'll notice in, in our YouTube videos here that we do with West, Western Iowa Tech here, we're willing to show the failures and mistakes or, or what this looks like. As we were putting this on here, this gear back here that have the light on is backwards. It's flipped. So we've got to start all over. We're going to take this apart. We're going to get this pinion shaft nut back off and then get that gear flipped and that is I mean uh, Casey that's just a great observation that you had there how bad a day would have this been could have we continued putting this together a hundred percent now obviously we're not done we're gonna check everything we're always gonna check our timing a, a dozen different times and we, we I would hope that we would have caught that but you know ideally we caught it right now so YouTube viewers this is a great opportunity to see what that looks like